Survivor Series is awesome. True over the last few years, it hasn't felt like the pay-per-view it once was. WWE's Thanksgiving extravaganza has still been responsible for countless incredible memories we're lucky to have. Like the time a bird hatched from an egg. Can never let us totally win. Can you, wrestling? There have been some amazing matches since Survivor Series debut in 1987, though, which means there's only one thing to do. I'm Simon from What Culture, and these are the 10 best Survivor Series matches ever. Number 10, The Undertaker vs. Hulk Hogan, 1991. It's easy to take for granted now because we live in an utterly different world than we did in 1991, but The Undertaker in the early 90s was terrifying. He was like nothing anyone had ever seen, and Mark Calloway was so good at the character, it was easy as a child to convince yourself he was actually a dead man. When he went up against Hulk Hogan at the Survivor Series in 1991 then, you were convinced Hogan was boned. Hell, the fans did too, because they weren't all in the Immortal One's corner. A large section were well and truly behind the soon-to-be phenom. The match itself certainly wasn't a five-star classic, but it was so intriguing and intense as you waited to see how things were going to play out, you couldn't help but be hooked. So when Ric Flair popped a chair in the ring and take a tombstone Hogan on top of it for the win and the WWF title, there was chaos. As Bobby Heenan himself said, Hulkamania was dead. The Undertaker's first ever World Championship win was an early landmark in an awe-inspiring career. Number 9. Bret Hart vs. Shawn Michaels, 1997. Well, it had to be in here somewhere, right? Whatever you think about the match itself or who was right and who was wrong, the Bret hart Shawn Michaels encounter at the Survivor Series 1997 changed everything. You could argue it's the most important bout in history given the ramifications of Fallout. It was the catalyst that lit the WWF on fire and turned Vince McMahon into the most hated heel on TV. Also, anything that still gets chatted about almost 20 years after the fact deserves its place in a list like this. That's some impact. On top of that, before all the nonsense with the sharpshooter, the two are actually tangling pretty well. We'll never get that schmoz ending though. Bitty. Number 8. The Rock vs. Mankind, 1998. Much like the Montreal Screwjob, and surprise, surprise, this match had exactly the same ending as that one from a year earlier, this was about that officially put The Rock on the map. Already a major player, his heel turn and subsequent alliance with the McMahons and the corporation was exactly what was needed to send the man on the proper road to superstardom. We all got duped in some masterful storytelling, The Rock even dropping an elbow on Vince on a Raw prior to the event. But it was a ruse, a ploy, a lie. Every fan on the planet had what they needed to truly and utterly hate one Dwayne Johnson. There was the other side of the coin too. Poor old mankind confused about what happened. The corporate chump had been screwed over as well. It was the perfect end to the Deadly Game tournament and showed that Mick Foley and Mr. Hollywood had obvious chemistry together. Number 7. Bret Hart vs. Diesel, 1995 Diesel was not a success. We're all aware of what a low point 1995 WWF was, and a large reason for this was Kevin Nash's title reign. It just didn't work. He was given a push too early and the fans tuned out. Now what does that remind me of? Another criticism thrown at Big Sexy, though, was that most of his matches were slow and boring. And you want to know why? Because most of his matches were slow and boring. But that's when you bring in Bret Hart. Tangling with Diesel in a no-DQ match at the Survivor Series in 1995, Bret proved why he was a future Hall of Famer by helping Nash to his best match by far at this point. With a story revolving around the hitman trying to take out Diesel's knee, it was a terrific back-and-forth affair that built wonderfully before the surprise finish. As Nash went for his jackknife powerbomb, Bret picked his injured leg and rolled him up for the win and the title. It was great then, and to be honest, it's still great today. It's pro wrestling done right. Number 6. The Elimination Chamber Match 2002 Being first always helps, and that's why the first ever Elimination Chamber match is always going to be somewhat special, even if everything possible that could go wrong did go wrong. For starters, all the pods opened in the wrong order. Then Rob Van Dam almost killed Triple H by crushing his throat, and Shawn Michaels came out wearing what looked like his gardening clothes. Not exactly the recipe for greatness. It was, though. The Elimination Chamber concept was awesome, and the structure created by the WWE was so impressive that you couldn't help but be taken back by it. The fact that HBK actually won the World Heavyweight Championship, his last world title run, was just the icing on the cake. A bona fide legend having his one last hurrah. Emotion is always the key in turning a decent encounter into an awesome one, and that's what this had. Sure, one best mate beat his other best mate for the belt, but who cares? It was a moment for the ages. Number 5. 
Batista vs The Undertaker in Hell in a Cell 2007. No one thought much when The Undertaker and Batista were paired against each other, but they continually proved everyone wrong. Survivor Series 2007 was no different. Engaging in yet another brutal match where the two just beat the shit out of each other, including Taker going through a table and Batista being tombstone on the steel steps, it was incredibly hard hitting and just a treat to watch. If you didn't know better, you'd be convinced they actually hated each other. It also did wonders for Edge of all people. As the dead man looked set to claim the World Heavyweight Championship, the rated R superstar revealed he had been dressed as a cameraman at ringside and butchered The Undertaker, which allowed Batista to get the win. It was exactly what was needed to keep the feud fresh and all three worked wonderfully well with each other. It's one of the better Hell in a Cell matches that few talk about today. Number 4. Randy Orton vs Shawn Michaels 2007 Shawn Michaels has always been able to tell great stories in the ring, and his tale against Randy Orton in the 2007 Survivor Series may be one of his best. The rules were simple. HBK couldn't use his finishing move, aka Sweet Chin Music. Now, between us, in the real world, that's ridiculous. It'd be like the FA telling Manchester City that Sergio Aguero is banned from all future games just because. Given he was somewhat scuppered, however, Michaels had to think outside the box, busting out a cross face, an ankle lock, and all manner of submission holds. As he struggled to gain momentum, though, he thought about going to the well that had won him so many matches in the past, and that was enough for Randy Orton to strike and hit the RKO for the win. It's proof positive that you don't need to do flippy sh** to enthrall an audience, and that Shawn Michaels was really, really good. Number 3. Edge and Rey Mysterio vs Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit vs Los Guerreros 2002 A tag match in a greatest match ever list. What has the world come to, eh? I don't know anymore. In fact, I'm out. I'll see you later. I'm not going anywhere. Given the competitors involved, it's no real surprise that this is considered a Survivor Series classic. Fought under elimination rules with Los Guerreros eventually taking the belts from Edge and Rey Mysterio, the key to this match was work rate. Everyone involved was seemingly trying to outdo the other to the point of lunacy, and from the moment the bell rung to the moment the mat finished, things never let up. Serving as a tag team template for anyone interesting in recreating similar magic is a testament to everyone involved. They were all masters of their craft and knew what they had to do to succeed. Number 2. Bret Hart vs Shawn Michaels 1992 A complete departure from what would happen just five years later, Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels had an absolutely terrific match at the Survivor Series 1992. Already carrying tons of steam given it was champion versus champion, although only Bret's WWF title was on the line, neither man put a foot wrong. With Bret playing the assured veteran and Shawn the young plucky up-and-comer, the match achieved a frantic pace with Michaels managing to deal with everything Hart had for him. The finish, too, was just excellent. After HBK hit Brett with Sweet Chin Music, his inexperience took over and he tried to inflict more offense. Seeing an opportunity to counter, Brett fought back, eventually tying Sean up in the sharpshooter for the win. It's amazing to see two people that would eventually hate each other have such a good relationship in the ring. This may very well be the best match they ever had. Number 1. Bret Hart vs Stone Cold Steve Austin 1996 The best thing about being an old man in 2016 is that in 1996, I was a young man, also known as a child, and got to enjoy everything and anything Bret Hart and Steve Austin did. We all know how great their match at WrestleMania 13 was, but that wasn't a standalone one-of-a-kind thing. They did it all the time, and did so again at this Survivor Series. With the opportunity for a shot at the WWF title on the line, Austin was slowly becoming the most popular person in the history of wrestling, whereas Hart was undoubtedly in his prime. Better still, this was one of the Hitman's first matches after an extended break, and he'd been goaded back into the ring after getting tired of Stone Cold's disrespectful ways. Much like the aforementioned classic, Hart had to move away from his usual babyface tactics to beat Austin, and it was the planting of a wonderful, wonderful seed. The two simply couldn't do anything wrong, and it's the best match in Survivor Series history. And that's a fact. Write it in the record books. There's no going back now. Know of any other matches we should have included? Let us know in the comments below, and then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can even come talk to me on Twitter at SimonMiller316. I'm Simon from What Culture, and I'll chat to you again soon.